the most famous of all vaccination trials was conducted in America in 1954. It involved Jonas Salk's vaccination, which was for polio. Some five million dollars were spent on this vaccination trial. Currently, the world seems to refer to this as the most prominent indication that vaccination benefits us. It is controlled experimental evidence. They had a placebo injection given to 200,000 children so that they would not know if they were vaccinated or not. 340,000 children had parents that would not allow them to participate in the trial. The children who received the placebo injection and the children who received the vaccination were strictly comparable. They were equally composed groups. The only difference was one group had the vaccination and the other group had the placebo injection. Well, just to consolidate where we were at at this stage in the talk, there were 200,000 kids who were vaccinated, 200,000 kids who had a placebo injection, and 340,000 kids whose parents didn't allow them to participate in the injection experiment. Only the two groups of 200,000, the vaccine and the placebo group, only they were suitable for comparison. The ingredients of the placebo injection, what was mentioned of them was that they did not contain tissue. I think this means there was no genetic material in there. It could have been DDT because at the time DDT was being sprayed on children as a remedy to kill all sorts of bad bugs. DDT was being sprayed on fruits and vegetables and loaded onto people's plates and into their mouths. DDT has been found to contribute to disease and is now illegal pretty much everywhere. DDT, when injected inside a human, would likely cause a severe shock, uh, immune response. It could have just as likely have been diesel or anything like that. I'm just using DDT as an example candidate of what could have been used in the placebo back in 1954. DDT hadn't proven at the time to have any kind of effect that might result in an increased chance of developing paralysis. DDT at the time was legal to use and spray on children. It now isn't could have been anything like DDT, which is not a cellular product. The children who received the placebo injection had a significantly higher rate of polio than the children who had the vaccination. It is interesting to me that nobody seems to question what the overall mortality rate or disease incidence rate was for the placebo group and the vaccination group. Why would you? People may think that you wouldn't do this because the trial, the vaccination is all about polio and the doctors said that whatever is in the placebo injection is okay to be injected into the body. Why would we focus? Why would we question if the placebo is going to cause any more disease? To get an indication of whether or not the placebo ingredients were conducive to causing more disease, we could have a look at the overall mortality rate of the children in these two groups. If the children in the placebo group had a significantly higher mortality rate than the children in the vaccination group in proportion to how much higher the rate of paralysis was in the placebo compared to the vaccination group. Then we could say that the placebo ingredients were the reason for the disparity in polio rates comparing the placebo and the vaccination group. I'll just try that one more time. If the children in the placebo group had a significantly higher mortality rate overall than the children in the vaccination group and the significance was in proportion to how much higher the paralysis was in the placebo group compared to the vaccination group. I mean, if the placebo group had 30% more paralysis than the vaccination group, if they also had 5 to 30% more overall mortality than the vaccination group, we could say that the reason for the disparity in paralytic disease was likely not because one group was immune to polio, but one group was poisoned. Not on purpose. I am not saying one group was poisoned on purpose, but perhaps by accident. 
to gain this clarification, again, we need to see something more than just polio diagnoses. Because if we are only looking at polio diagnoses and we see a difference in one group compared to the group that is having the polio mitigation treatment, we are bound to just assume that it was because of the mitigation that we believed was going to work. Check whether the placebo group had a higher disease incidence rate overall so we can squash out whether or not the placebo ingredients harmed the human and made them more susceptible to the disease in general because I very much doubt it would cause just para paralytic disease only. The odds of that randomly happening be very unlikely and the odds that someone would specifically inject children with something that's going to cause paralytic disease specifically I think are uh, even far more unlikely. My best guess is that we found something that would simulate being vaccinated giving the recipient an immune shock and it accidentally caused extra disease and we accidentally thought that it gave us an indication that our vaccination worked because the materials we injected as the placebo we didn't realize that they actually caused more disease and it made our vaccination look good because it didn't make much of an effect on disease in the three months witnessed. The American Statistical Association provided us with Professor Kenneth Brownlee. He is a professor in mathematics statistics. He said that 59% of the trial was a waste and that 41% is worth considering, yet contains evidence of bias in favour of the vaccinated. He said all sorts of things, reprimanding about um, the usage of certain terminology that pertains to statistics and misunderstanding certain things that pertain to statistics. He basically just did his job and he also did his job in that the Statistical Association found that the children who their parents did not allow to participate in the trial because there were 340,000 of these children this is an excerpt from the medical report that I shared at the start of this video. Just know that the uninoculated people is referring to those who didn't get a placebo or a vaccination injection. The question has been asked why the incidence of paralytic cases is less in the uninoculated members of the population than in the placebo controls. One can only repeat that the populations receiving vaccine or placebo are strictly comparable in every characteristic. They are equal parts of one population, while those who refused participation are distinctly different. They were found to have a slightly higher rate of polio than the vaccinated group, and they were found to have a lower rate of polio, a significantly lower rate of polio than the placebo group. In the medical report, the authors, in addressing this, they said that the reason is these groups cannot be compared. They are different. They are not appropriately constructed for comparison. The American Statistical Association dug into this to try to find if there is any reason why these two groups might not be good for comparing rates of disease. What they found worthy of mention was that those whose parents did not allow them to participate were on average from a lower socioeconomic status. And this in 1954 meant statistically speaking you were more susceptible to disease and yet this group had a significantly lower rate of polio than the placebo group. The placebo group had 0.08% with polio. The vaccinated group had 0.04% with polio and the group that did not get any injection had 0.05% polio. So comparing the group that had no injection at all with 0.05% polio to the group who had the placebo injection, which had 0.08% polio. That's nearly double the amount of polio, but it's not. It's significantly more. And the Statistical Association, after the mass worldwide media release was done, the Statistical Association found that this group, all that we can comment on here for what might be a confounding factor for comparing rates of disease in these groups, is that this group is from a lower association economic status. This should prompt a response from the medical team to show the overall mortality rates of the placebo group compared to the vaccinated group and the uninjected group too. The thing is the world saw this coming, Jonas Salk's vaccination, they believed it was going to work. The media released its big release. The release was the placebo group 
had way more polio than the vaccinated group and that was the only group that we could compare and that was all that the world needed to take off with this major belief brown lee's critique it's there and perhaps that's the reason why jonas salk never got voted into the national academy of sciences why he was apparently blackballed maybe it's because unlike what the yale university presidents say maybe it's because his product never proved unassailably to provide anyone any benefit at all most people say yeah it did the trial it shows it well we just spoke about the trial and if you believe that the trial is the most famous trial of all because it is great and it shows the power of vaccination um i invite you to point out to me please precisely the nature of this power that you are talking about is it the power to sell the whole world this idea that you've got this great vaccination with a placebo group with mystery ingredients compared to the vaccination group that that's how much power that's all you need is a polio vaccine injected group versus a mystery ingredients injected group a rate of polio um nothing else just just a rate of polio comparing these two groups I and mean, as long as the vaccinated group wins that's all that the whole world will need to make jonas sulk a really rich man or whoever the whole the whole world will get that vaccination that is incredible power yes because if you're talking about the disease mitigation power of vaccination demonstrated in that vaccination trial, point out specifically where it is. If it is that the placebo group had less disease than the vaccination group, if that's where you see the disease mitigation power, then that's all. But I don't believe that there's anyone out there who can understand the whole situation, this whole video of who got paralysis and who didn't, and who was just more likely to get disease overall and who wasn't, and what data we were presented with, and the American Statistical Association critique uh, perhaps we should look at what was in that placebo ingredient and then you still say that yeah that still means that it's great it's an unassailable indication then